Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Child Anxiety FAC podcast. FAC stands for Frequently Asked Questions, and I'll be answering your questions about child and teen anxiety. My name is Dawn Friedman, and I've been working with kids and families for more than 30 years. Now I run Child Anxiety Support, a membership program for parents of anxious kids and teens. Let's get started. Our question this week is unfortunately a very common one. How do I co-parent my anxious child with someone who causes more problems with the anxiety? The particular question I received that inspired this episode is much longer and more personal, so I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but I will share that the listener says that the relationship between mom and dad has lots of conflict, not just about anxiety, but about other parenting choices too. And the listener is wondering, and here I will quote directly, do we just carry on with how we handle her anxiety in our care despite being different? How does an anxious child cope with split homes? How do we ensure the anxious child doesn't play the parents off against each other, which currently happens? We are lost and her anxiety is getting worse. There is a lot happening here, so I want to slow down and first of all address the issue of different parents doing things differently. The fact is, we have no control over how things happen in our children's other household. In a perfect world, we'd be able to talk to our children's co-parent and come to general, respectful understanding, if not agreement. But we don't live in a perfect world. So the answer to the first question, do we just carry on with how we handle things, is yes. You carry on that way. You do the best you can. You parent in the way you feel is most helpful and healthy for your child, period. The second question the listener asks is, how does an anxious child cope with split homes? Well, that depends on the child and that depends on the homes. Divorced families, in my opinion, as a child of divorce and as someone who has worked with lots of divorced families, are not automatically less healthy than intact families. My take is that happy, healthy parents are good for raising happy, healthy kids. And for many families, that means not parenting together in the same household. The issue that I'm seeing in this question is not that the parents are apart physically, is that they are so far apart philosophically and aren't able to be supportive of each other. And yes, that can be an issue for any kid, but especially for anxious kids. I have worked with many families who don't live together and who may not always operate on the same wavelength. But if they are respectful of each other's differences and don't badmouth each other, I don't think that has to be a problem. Maybe mom eats meat and dad runs a vegan household, but it's fine because the kids know that the different houses just do things differently. Now, both parents might have strong feelings about the way they choose to eat, and that is fine. People should live out their values, and it doesn't have to be a problem if they are respectful of each other's right to make their own decisions in their own homes. In a case like that, kids know what to expect. They know they have pepperoni on their pizza at mom's and that at dad's they'll top their pizza with soy cheese and it's all good. They know they can talk about the different pizzas in their different homes and nobody will get upset. That shows consistency and care and respect, which matters so much. And I'd argue that those kids, with parents who are so far apart in their thinking, but so open and welcoming to the child's other family's way of doing things are lucky because they know that if they do things differently too, they won't lose the love and respect of their parents. They will grow up to make their own decisions and to understand that there's lots of ways to do things. When it comes to anxiety, if one parent, for example, let's call them Jill, signs up for my program and recognizes that they need to create exposures for their anxious child, and the other parent, let's call them Bill, is unwilling to do this, yeah, this might slow things down, but it doesn't need to halt things altogether. Exposure, at least part of the time, is better than never having exposures ever. Now, it may be hard on Jill. Jill may feel like she always has to be the so-called bad guy, since she's the one always pushing their child to confront their anxiety. And Bill might feel like Jill is being too hard on their child, 
But as long as they don't interfere with each other, the child is going to learn that the different houses do things differently. The problem comes if Jill starts telling the child, your father isn't doing you any favors, or if Bill starts telling them, your mom is being too mean to you, or if they start fighting with each other about it, or, and unfortunately this happens way too often, start trying to pull in allies, whether that be the child themselves or other people like teachers, siblings of the child, friends of the family. For example, when I was doing clinical work with kids, I'd have divorced parents in my office trying to get me to go to court with them against the other parent. And there's a million reasons why this is not okay, starting with, if you hire a therapist for your child, it is unethical for that therapist to make custody recommendations. And also, again, what happens in the other household, barring outright neglect or abuse, belongs to that other parent. In other words, if you are serving vegan pizza and the other family is serving pepperoni pizza, that is ultimately none of your business. I know that is a hard pill to swallow. I'm not saying you won't care. Of course you care. But the way things happen in the other household is just the way they do things. And if there are behaviors or parenting choices that you are concerned about, then it's even more important that your household remain as healthy and supportive as possible. I am not so naive as to think that if you are worried about your child's safety at their other parent's house, that it's as easy as going to court or getting a guardian ad litem or calling Child Protective Services to make things change. I know it doesn't happen that way, and I appreciate how incredibly painful and upsetting that is. That discussion is way beyond the scope of this podcast, but I do want to assure you that your focus on creating A safe home, regardless of what the other parent does or does not do, will make a difference. All you can control is how things operate in your home. So your focus needs to be on figuring out how to create that supportive, loving, and healthy environment. And in the case of anxiety, that should include learning how to parent an anxious child so you don't get stuck in the parenting pitfalls, whatever happens in the child's other home. Your consistency Your care, your safety, will help your child feel safe too. Remember, connection and healthy relationships help to mitigate harm. There is lots we can't protect our children from, and frustratingly, sometimes that includes their other parent. Now back to the original post, there's something else they said that I want to talk about, which is, how do we ensure the anxious child doesn't play the parents off against each other? Well, We can't ensure that. We can only focus on how we respond when it happens. I don't have details here with this family, this family who reached out to me, so I'm going to make some guesses, and I apologize in advance to the original poster if I'm missing the mark. When our anxious children play one parent off another, and this is super common, whether or not families are living together, it might be helpful to see this through the lens of avoidance. Remember, anxiety is about avoidance. When the child plays parents off each other, what are they trying to avoid? When you see the behavior through that lens, does it make it any easier to understand? And how can you help them not avoid the thing they're trying to avoid? Also, can you unhook any feelings you have about the other parent from this situation? What I mean is, if you feel defensive or put on the defensive, Can you recognize that that dynamic is about the relationship you have with the other parent? If you feel comfortable about how you are handling your child's anxiety, if you feel confident in your choices, then can you let the other parent's judgment or anger go? If your child says, my other parent never makes me do that, can you simply say, yeah, I know they do things differently than I do. If the other parent tries to get involved and change the way you're doing things, Well, again, that's about your relationship with the other parent. Remember, you do not need to convince them. It's okay that you are doing things the way that you're doing them. Sometimes in my work with divorced family, it can feel like the parents are so focused on what's happening in the other household that they're understandably so frustrated or angry or sad that they're missing the opportunity to parent well in their own home and to celebrate and feel good about their own good parenting. I am not blaming here. I'm saying that I totally understand why trying to co-parent with someone who is not supportive of you 
who is making choices that appear harmful to the kids, can feel absolutely overwhelming. But ultimately, we need to figure out how to let it go. I am not saying ignore it. I'm not saying pretend like it's not happening. I'm saying to recognize that we can only control what we can control. If our child's other parent is, well, a jerk, that's lousy. And it is unfair that some kids have parents who are jerks. It's really painful. But for those kids, what they need is at least one parent who is not a jerk. One parent who is going to keep doing the very best they can, who will stay focused on what they can control, and that thing is their own healthy household, and that parent can work hard to create consistency and safety wherever they can. If this means getting your own therapy, finding your own social supports, I hope you'll do that. As an aside, I will add that this is why the Child Anxiety Support Program is built on Mighty Networks which has a community component to the learning. We know that divorced parents, and in fact all parents, do better when they aren't isolated and when they find a community who will help them deal with the very real, very difficult emotions that come with parenting, especially that come with co-parenting and conflict. I wish I had better answers to this, but I hope that this is validating and that it's helpful to know that whatever you can do for your anxious child it's going to make a difference. Thanks for tuning in this week. And if you have a question you'd like me to address on the show, you can reach out to me by going to childanxietysupport.com and submitting a question there. You can also check out the program while you're there. And if you'd like to learn more about whether or not it would be a good fit for your family, feel free to reach out for a quick consult call. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week.